Polyglot Channel. Today we're going to have a look at Hospital by Madison Cunningham. We are going to learn this exactly as it sounds on the record. Now when you see her playing live, she plays the song almost exactly the same. There are tiny differences, but I promise you if you learn it the way it is on the record, you'll be able to work out everything that she does live. Let's look at that in a close-up. Okay, so the first thing to talk about here is the tuning. This is in a very, very low tuning. So from low to high we have B, E, A, D, F sharp, and B. And B. Right, so we're tuning everything down by a lot. A couple of tips that I can give you when you tune down this much is do it little by little and fine tune every time. So you're gonna have to go through all six strings at least three or four times to make sure that they're in tune. And when you fret, you're gonna have to make sure that you're not squeezing too much because if you do, you start pulling on the strings and that affects the tuning instantly. So you're gonna have to be smooth on your left hand and make sure that you fine tune. So go through all six strings until they all hold the tuning. Let's have a look at the riffs here. So the intro is four bars and it really is only based around two chords, an E7 and A major. So although it's really simple, what makes this sound really, really cool are all the uh, interesting riffs that you have in between and also the really low tuning, obviously. So let me play you the four bars and then we'll break them down bar, one bar at a time. Here we go. Three, Okay, so let's break that down one bar at a time. On the first bar, we are really based on that E major chord. And we go, we only play the bass note. And then we jump up to the third string, that's the G string, we play that. Then the D string, and we pull off. Then we play the fifth string, that's the A string. And then we play the open A, twice, so you have, right, so far it's only one note at a time. Then you take your index finger to the third fret of the second string and your middle finger to the fourth fret of the third string, right, so you get these two notes, 
and you slide up two frets. So. Great. Bar number two. It starts off in exactly the same way. Except that you have that little riff. Okay, what's going to be really tricky about this little riff is the timing. Because you have one, two, E, and a three, F, four, E, and. Okay, so the first note of that riff, which is on the fourth fret of the fifth string, play that with your ring finger, that happens right before the fourth beat. It feels like it should be happening on the beat, but it doesn't. It happens right before it. And it's actually the next note, the one that you'll play with your middle finger in the third fret of that fifth string. That's the one that falls on the beat. So, bam, that's the beat. A uh, four, E, and one. Okay, so you go four, three, two, and then with the same index finger, you drop to the D string, also second fret, right? So counting that bar again, one, two, E, and a three, up for E, and one. All right, bar number three. It starts off the same way. But here you have the same thing that you had before with the same two fingers, but this time you could go up, sliding, and then you come back down to the third and fourth frets. So that third bar again. And the fourth bar starts off the same way. And that's the end. So what was different in that fourth time? Well, that, that, there isn't really a riff at the end, right? So you have one, two, e, and you have two A's, and then you have a chicka on four E before you start off the verse. I'll show you what happens on the record as closely as I can. Now, this is not necessarily the way she'll play it live, although it's very, very close. But again, you know, don't think of this as it must absolutely be exactly like this. No, not really. It's, it's more try to get the feel for what's happening and, and, and then replicate or rather play something that goes along with the feel and that feels natural to you. The main tips will be we want to play really softly and we don't want to be strumming the whole chord at any time. So here goes the verse. Three, Okay, so that's the first half. So what's happening? We are on that E. Again, we really only want to hit the bass note on a one and. And there, you're hitting two E and a, really on the two high strings and you're turning that E into an E7 by adding the pinky on the third fret of the second string, maybe on the second semiquaver, right now. So two E and a, two E and a. But as we said, don't stress too much about this. It's all about replicating the feel rather than each note precisely, so. And then you'll move down to A major, which because you really are only focusing on the power chord and maybe the second string, you can play as a partial barre with your index barring uh, all strings uh, from the fourth, third, second. And although you're bearing the first, you don't really want to play the first. And there again, you only have the bass note twice on three and four. On four, you want to play the power chord. So, four. And then you have a chicka. So that first bar again, just so you get the feel. And again.
This is just a first bar looped. Okay, hopefully that gives you an idea as, as to what the feel should be. And as long as you're doing something similar, it'll sound cool. Remember that you want to play softly. That's the main thing. On the second bar, it's almost exactly the same. Except that you have that on the fourth beat, 4 E and. And that is the, the index finger on the third fret of the second string together with the open first string. And then the index moves up half a step or one fret and then another one. And the rhythm for E and. Okay, so that second bar one more time, three, four. Great. On that third bar, on the, f the everything is the same up until the fourth beat again, where you have a transition to our new chord where you have, so this is the whole third bar. One, A, and here you have four, open A, fourth fret on the sixth string, and then you'll play the second fret on the sixth string, and this is the beginning of the next bar. So one more time. Okay, and that's one and of the next bar. So that next bar goes. So, F sharp minor, play the bass note again on one and. On two E and uh, we have two E and uh. You strum on two E, and you really want to strum the middle strings. Two E and uh, are muted strums, so one and. Uh. And then you have a D power chord, so like your normal D, but you're only, only playing strings two, three, and four. Then C sharp minor, and chica at the end. Cool. Now this sequence, this four bar sequence, will repeat again very similarly. So on the next repeat you have... Same thing. So here again, on that second bar of the second time you have a little riff that starts on three with the open fifth string, so... Three, a uh, four, e and right. Very similar in rhythm to the one that you had in the intro, but this one goes the other way around. So you start on the second fret of the fifth string, third, fourth, and then the index again on the second fret of the fourth string. Let's play that one again. One and three, a uh, four, e and. Same thing here with the F sharp minor, pre-chorus, F sharp minor, B7. All right, so let's have a look at those first two bars in the pre-chorus, where you have that F sharp again, same idea, one and on the bass note, then two E and a, right? And then you move up to a B7 on the 7th fret, and same idea. Except that that one is generally only strummed one, so 3 and 4 and a. Okay, so again that would be... And then you have this riff, we have an open low 6th, 4th fret, seven, fifth, and back to an E power chord, right? So but you have a chica at the end. Same thing again.
right? Um, that second time on the record, there's a tiny little variation and that last E comes a little bit later. Again, I wouldn't stress too much about it, but there you have it. It's just like I played it now and it's all written down for you if you want to um, nail that. Essentially the same thing as the previous time, right? Um, and on the third time, you have... Okay, so that was the F sharp minor. One strum on those middle strings, and then you jump all the way up to fret nine with your ring finger, and you drop one fret at a time. And once you get to that seventh fret, that's your B7 already. Three and four. Okay. And then you have, you have to go all the way back to an open E, you play the bottom, say, four strings. You jump all the way up to the 10th fret of the low sixth string. And then you play this new shape. Okay, this is a minor sixth shape. Um, I'll let you work it out from the diagram that you have it there. Right, so you have... And you have three and four and... And you close that by dropping the index one fret and strumming that twice. All right, so the last bar. One, two, three, and four, and one, and. And then you have this riff that follows the melody. All right. So that is, we are on the fourth and sixth frets. With your ring finger, play the um, third string sixth fret. You go down two frets to the index. Same thing on the string below. And then with the same index, drop a further two frets. All right, so, so far. That's it. And then you play an open E power chord and then an A power chord as well, really. And then you repeat that. Hey, so how's it going so far? Don't forget that you have tabs on my Patreon page. Check the description below. So on the bridge, we have this C sharp minor sixth shape that I showed you before. And we play that for three bars, alternated between that and the one that has the index a fret further down. So you, you go like this. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So you want to have a short strum on the beat and a long one on the and. So short, long, short, long. And then you drop the index, same thing. And that's the first bar. So one and two and three and four and again. And then a third bar. And then you drop all the way down and you play a big open E. You add the pinky to make it a seventh. So you add it, you add it on the third fret of the B string, or second string. You drop on an A major. And you have that riff again that we've looked at. Um, then you will repeat that, right? The, the previous three bars and you'll have that that repeats the second time before you go back to the other sections. And that's it. So I hope that the video was useful. If it was, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for staying till the end and I'll see you next time. Hasta la próxima. Arrivederci. Au revoir.